book, you see it talks about building a, um, building a brand, building a master brand or building, you know, a brand and attracting a tribe. And I thought about that and I thought, you know, um, I look at my life and it's, it's barely recognizable. How did I do that? So I'm going to tell you some journeys with me. I'm a storyteller. I'm a chicken soup for the soul author. So we live through stories. I'm going to tell you some stories. I'm going to tell you stories about inside of my power and out of my power. When, when I was um, my last year in college... <laughs> which was my first year. <laughs> I like to say it like that because it sounds like I went somewhere. Yeah, right, yes, yes. It wasn't for everybody. It just wasn't the environment for me. They kept wanting me to get good grades this day. So <clears throat> my last year in college, I took an English class. It was that basic English class you take your first year. And I received a fail. And my English teacher wasn't the fail that I received. It was the fact that she stood me in front of the class and said, Lisa, you have to be the weakest writer that I've ever met in my entire life. And with my smart mouth, the one that I've always had, it, it travels with me, I said, do I get a trophy for that? Does that come with an award? I mean, if I'm the best at being your worst, give me an award. Don't just put me up on Front Street. So I didn't get the award. I got the fail. But anyway, that same year, I took a speech class. And I knew if I couldn't do anything else, I could talk, because I've been getting in trouble for talking all my life. And so now I got a class. This is going to be the one A I get, because, or maybe even the one B I get, because I always got C's. For 12 years, I got C's. I'm, I, wasn't, I wasn't like Vision. I wasn't like some of you. I wasn't like Roland. I wasn't one of those brilliant students. I was that student where I was still trying to find myself. Yes, yes, anybody like that? Anyone like that? I don't know if my tribe is here. So I was that kid that I studied all day and all night just to get a C. And when other people were upset about getting a C, like, dang, I got a C. I'm like, I got a C. Go, Lisa. It's your birthday. Go, Lisa. And I'm like, so basically, I don't have to take the class again, right? As long as I don't have to take the class again, I'm cool. I passed. Who cares about the 4.5 that the other kids get? And I didn't know what the AP was. What are them app kids doing? What is that app thing? <laughs> is that an app for a program? No, that was advanced placement. You just have nothing to do with that program. <laughs> And so school for me was difficult. I'm a kinesthetic learner, I'm a hands-on learner, I'm a tactile learner. I need to see it, hear it, touch it, breathe it, play it back to you. School don't have time for that. So it was very difficult for me. So when I took my speech class, I said, oh, no, 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 see, this speech class, I got this thing down. I've been talking a long time. I'm captain of the cheerleading squad. I was captain of the track team in high school. I've been talking all my life. I got this down. My teacher said, Use, uh, I want you to write four speeches. So I wrote four speeches. He said, I want to be edgy. So I'm going to make them edgy. I want to be a little confrontive. Okay, I can do confront. I want you to grab the audience. Okay, I can do that. So I write my speeches. Little did I know he was an ultra conservative, and his, his version of edgy wasn't mine. <laughs> I'm from South Central L.A. I live on the edge, right? I have three fights a week to get home from school. Edgy is my middle name. So when I wrote about racism, he wasn't happy. When I wrote about incest... He didn't like it. When I wrote about the Black Panthers and how they tried to create a movement but did it with violence and it didn't work, but I understood their plight, he really didn't like that. So by the time I got to um, the grading point, I went to his, his, his desk and I'm ready to see the first A in my life. I'm ready. And when he turned the book around and I saw that I received, and the one thing I knew I knew how to do, which is speaking, I received a D minus. And he said, Miss Nichols, I recommend you never speak in public, that you get a desk job. Don't worry, the story ends great. <laughs> Don't feel bad for me. Yes yes. Yes yes. yes, yes? yes, yes? Some of your best motivation will come in the form of I'll show you motivation. You're waiting for all of it to be rah, rah, kumbaya, we believe in you. Some of it is in the, I'm sorry, I need to show you who I am. Some of it may come in that way. And you got to use it as your fuel, not your fortress. Something someone has said or done to you, some situation in your life, you're still using it as if it's a weight to your leg. No, that's your fuel. He was my fuel. And I didn't have an I show, I'll show you energy. I just had an energy of, wait a minute, hold up. I don't think you get to define my future. Yes, yes. But for a minute... For a minute, I wasn't mature enough to get that. So I leave college, and all I know is that I'm the weakest writer my English teacher ever met in her entire life. And she was old. <laughs> so that was a long life. It wasn't like it was like 30 years. It was like 68 years. I'm like, dang, your whole life? My whole life. And I left college 
being told by my speech professor I should never speak in public. And now I'm out to live my dream. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. So fast forward 18 years, I get recommended from a friend to submit stories to Jack Canfield for Chicken Soup for the African American Soul, which was the newest book they're writing. And I'm a great storyteller. She said, you know, you should write, you should submit the stories because you're a great storyteller. I said, well, can I tell him the story? <laughs> or do I need to write the story? Now I'm going to tap into some of where you are, so I just want you to remember, when you hear your journey, say yes, yes with me. Don't leave me up here alone, right? So all of a sudden, I had gotten through the last, you know, it probably was 10, 13 years speaking and orating, but in a small group, just in L.A. I'm a motivated L.A. I'm going to feel good about motivating L.A. How many of you guys have had a dream and you keep it contained because it's safe for you? Yes, yes, yes? You know, you got a dream, but if I keep it right here, it's cool. I know I can do that. Yes, yes? Because I knew I don't know how I am in the world, but in L.A., I'm the bomb.com. I'm that thing in L.A. So this is where I'm going to stay. And all of a sudden, I'm asked to do chicken soup for the soul writing, and all of my issues came back. Have you ever had an opportunity and all your back, your back story, your, all the stuff happened 20 years ago, start fast forwarding like it's right here, like it's a Google, Google day. Need another mic? Hi. I ain't going to stop, so y'all work that out. So, so, so all of a sudden, all my issues around writing comes up, all in my face. My giant in L.A. and my shrinking inside of, I don't want to write for him so he can tell me I'm the weakest writer he's ever seen too. And so for the first month, I, 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 I put him off. No, I'm really busy, Mr. Canfield. I'm really busy. <laughs> Y'all laughing because it don't make no sense, right? For those of you who don't know, Chicken Soup is in the Guinness Book of the World's Records as being the longest standing best-selling series in the history of any series. And Mr. Canfield has asked me to consider being a co-author, and I'm too busy being broke. But he don't know that. Right? I said, I'm a single mom, I'm a CEO, now I'm a CEO of absolutely nothing. Anybody else? Come on, y'all, tell the truth. Yes, yes. Bust yourself out. Come on, it's all right. We're in a safe environment. You can just tell the truth out loud. There's no judgment here. I'm a CEO of nothing. Like, there's zero income. I got a savings that's just running low, right? But I'm busy. And I'm a single mom of a three-year-old who really can't wait to get away from me and go to school every day. But I'm busy. Then another month goes by, and he calls me again, or his staff calls me. Miss Nichols, we really want to um, encourage you to consider being a chicken soup author. I said, thank you so much. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm really busy. I'm a CEO and a single mom. I really don't have time. They said, okay. Third month, I get another call. Sometimes somebody's trying to rescue you from yourself, y'all. Hello? Yes, yes? yes? Sometimes someone's trying to rescue you from yourself. So I get a third call. Miss Nichols, we really are interested. In, you know, we saw some video on you, and we really like your style. We think you're a great fit for chicken soup. I said, I'm so flattered. That's so nice, but I'm really busy. I'm really, maybe call me back later. I'm really busy, right? I was, I was stuck. How many of you guys are master at be, being stuck? When you stuck, you stuck good. Like, I'm strong at everything. I'm strong in my movement, and I'm strong in my stuck. So here I was, strong in my stuck. Fourth month, they call me back again. How many of you guys, your dream is chasing you? Come on, you guys. Come on. This is not just entertainment. I want to tap into where you are. How many, your dream is, inter your dream is chasing you, and you're trying to outrun it? You see it everywhere. You, come on, you guys. You see other people living it. You know you can do it, and you like on the edge, like, I can do it. And you just look like you're about to jump into a, a double dutch game. You know how when the girl, when they turn in for the double dutch and they on the side like this, this is how you look. I'm about to get in. I'm about to get in. I'm about to get in. Hold on. Keep turning. Keep turning. I'm about to get in. Keep turning. Hold on. They're like, come on. Hurry up. It's been three years. Hold on. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just got to get some things ready. Hold on. I got to make sure I'm ready. Got to make sure the kids are right. Make, make sure my, my husband's all right. Make sure my dream. I got to get, I like it perfect. Hold on. Y'all keep turning for about two more years. Yes, yes. Yes, yes? yes, yes. So here I was living that reality. And so five months go by, five months. And then the woman says something that uh, insulted me. And you know, sometimes when you insult somebody, you react. And, and when you react, the truth jumps out. She said, Miss Nichols, I thought you were a smart businesswoman. Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, hmm? <laughs> rut roll, rut roll. <laughs> she said, 
you know, I look at your, your website and what you've done, and you, you seem brilliant. I don't understand why you're saying no to the largest best-selling series in the history of best-selling series. You, like, don't have to apply. They just want you. Why are you saying no? And without my permission, the truth jumped out. I said, because I'm busy, I got a lot of things to do, and I'm scared. Who said that? And what happened was, I knew who I was in this industry, but I didn't know if I could succeed in this industry. How many of you guys are wondering if that thing that you love the most, if you could be successful at it? You're wondering. And then the wondering got you kind of doing this. And the wonder, because you know what you know over there. I'm good over here. I'm getting my C that looks like an A. It's an A in that environment, but it's a C in my whole life. Hello? But it's an A over there. Why do you want me to take that risk to get another C or a D minus or a fail again? I didn't realize that the rejection that I had gotten before was guiding me, but it was the background music real low. I couldn't quite hear it anymore. Does that make sense, you guys? I told you I'm going to stir your soul. I stopped by to stir your soul. And so I finally took a leap in. I said, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I wrote, ten, I wrote five stories for Chicken Soup. I, I wrote them. My keyboard was covered with tears the entire time. The entire time. How many of you guys have a story in your belly and you want to be an author or you're a speaker? Raise your hand. Raise your hands up high. Raise two hands if you really got a message that you got to get out. Raise two hands and stand up if you absolutely can't leave this planet before you get that message out, whether it's in writing, whether it's vocally, whether it's through your product. Look around the room. Look at all the great messages in this room that you can't get out. Give yourselves a hand for having the courage to stand up. So... So I wrote, five, I wrote five stories, and he said, I want you to collect five stories as well to see if you can collect a, a powerful story and write a powerful story. So now I'm writing five stories, crying the whole time. If you don't like my stories, it's okay, because I don't even want no chicken soup anyway. <laughs> and I, how many times you act like you sort of want it, but you don't want it? You can care less if you don't get it, but you really want it. Come on, you guys. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, like, it's all right, I sort of want, but I'm cool if I don't get I'm already making it okay to not hit the goal, right? If you don't like me, I don't like him anyway, <laughs> right? And so I tried to hide the stories, <laughs> let me tell you. I got published authors, and I, I wasn't a published author at the time, so I got published authors to give me their story. And I would try to hide my story in between their stories so that their stories can kind of carry my story. I'm like sneaky little rat, I am. <laughs> trying to say I'm I am, trying to hide the story. And so he called me back seven days, pacing the floor. <laughs> oh, I don't like this whole waiting for approval thing from somebody. This don't work for me. This is why I own my own company that's making no money. I, I just, I, I, and all of a sudden, seven days in, he calls me. And he says, Lisa, I have good news and not so good news. Ooh, my chatter went off. I don't care about chicken soup anyway, right? Still doing that justification. He said... You wrote five powerful stories, but I need you to be able to collect stories as powerfully as you write. Hmm? Rut roll, Scooby Doo. I said, I'm sorry, Mr. Canfield, say that again. He said, You are a powerful story writer. But the stories you collected from those other authors, they were kind of weak. Your dream is so ready for you, it's so ready for you. And what I want you to get, is you're so ready for it. You don't have to get ready. You were born ready. You were born ready for your calling. And now you're waiting for other people to agree with you. Hmm. Hmm. When I decided to be an author and a speaker, my family had a family meeting without me. They got a show called Intervention. That would be what that was. That Lisa, sit, Lisa got a three-year-old baby. She want to go off and talk to people. Hell, she talk all the time. Why? She can't make a business doing that. You have to be willing to walk by yourself for a while. I'm going to say something that some of you came here to get. If no one in your community gets your vision, it's because God didn't give it to them. God gave it to you. 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 You got to be willing to be impregnated with something the world has not seen. Hold it, cherish it, feed it, nurture it, do the work for it. And then when you birth it through, the world can then see it. But it's, it, it's in you. 
So don't get mad at your family if they're not your fans. Don't get mad at your community, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, if they don't get the vision. It's not theirs to get. It's yours to nurture and to bring forth. Yes, yes? Yes, yes? yes, yes. yes, yes. So it took me three and a half years to write the book. Three and a half years. You want to talk about building a brand and building a tribe, I'm going to give you some key techniques just real fast. We'll go over a lot more on Monday. But I'm going to give you some real techniques. The, I thought chicken soup was going to make it a bestseller. And they said, newsflash, you're going to make it a bestseller if it's a bestseller. See, we pumping out books every month. We already got 92 under our belt. Now they have 146. So we just have to make a little bit of money on every book, and then we'll make a lot of money. Well, that didn't necessarily agree with me because it was my one opportunity. And so I created an online culture where every month I gather people on the phone online who had an interest in being in the book. And every month I would listen to their stories over the phone because I learned that I had a gift on how to help you shape your story, a gift on how to help you speak. And so I would listen to their stories and then I'd coach them on how to tweak it. I created this online community all around the world. I had no database. I had no database. I barely was like, I would get online and get lost. Like, I'm one of those people, right? And so I had a database, but I had all these people, 300 people who had wrote in the chicken soup that they wanted to, a book around African American souls. So chicken soup gave me all their emails. So I had about 350 emails. That's it. That's what I started with. And every month I sent them out an email saying, join this call. If 80 people joined, I was happy. If 90 people joined, I was elated. 152 people joined. I wrote the whole book with 152 people to start with. I told them the stories. I read my stories for them. I told them the guidelines for the stories. And every month for three and a half years, we got on the, on the phone. And I would help them with their stories. And then when the book was done, I showed them three different covers to, help, to get their help to choose the cover. Why? People support what they help to create. Yes, yes? yes, yes. This conversation is about how do you build your tribe, right? How do you activate your brand, right? Well, I'm going to tell you how I activated my brand. It was in like the back the back doorway. Long before, chick, long before the secret, my brand was being activated, which is what attracted the secret to me. And so we got on the phone, and I said, which cover do you like? They said, we like that cover. I said, okay, great. This is the cover you choose. This is the cover we're going to have. So I let my community create the book with me. Then when the book was done, I said, okay, Chicken Soup wants to do a tour in Barnes and & Nobles and B. Dalton Books. Five. I need a little more than that. And unfortunately, African-Americans aren't beating down the door to be Dalton and Walden books. Reality. But they will, no matter where they've been on Saturday night. They will be in church on Sunday morning. Some walking sideways, some sitting straight. But they will be in church on Sunday morning. So I'd like to do my tour in church. They said, unheard of. We can't support that. See, some of you have to stop asking permission. Sometimes you have to say, I'm not asking permission, I'm giving notice. Yes, yes. So I said, oh, I'm sorry. See, I was telling you about the churches to let you know where I was going. And they said, we can't support you financially. I had, had $16,000 in the bank. My tour cost me $15,081. You got to be willing to risk it all to gain it all. I was willing to risk it all to gain it all. I got those same 152 people on the, on the phone, and I said, I need to go to your churches. Can you get me in your churches? Here's the guidelines. I have to have at least 500 people. I need to speak at least five minutes. 27 people off that call got me in their churches, and I started the chicken soup slash chitlin circuit tour. I never knew who was picking me up, but someone was there. I couldn't stay in a hotel. I had to stay in their houses because I had no money. Everybody made me some version, amen, of chicken soup. <laughs> chicken and rice, chicken and dumpling, chicken and noodles, chicken and grease, chicken and bread, chicken and something unrecognizable. <laughs> and I ate it. And in every city, they pray for me. This baby going, because it was all African Americans and they were older people. This baby on her journey. Y'all pray for that baby. She, she's selling chicken soup in a book. <laughs> Half of them didn't know what I was doing, but I was telling the story. I was on a mission. And it was like the modern day, like it was the, it was the underground, above ground railroad. Like I wish I had a, a, a video camera in my eyes because every city I'd go and I just, and I was scared. I didn't know. I'd land. I'd go to baggage claim. I had no idea who was speaking up. And they say, you that baby from chicken soup? Come on. I got you. 
and I get in their Hondas, I get in their Hugos, I get in their Toyotas, I get on their bicycles, and I go. And I speak at the church, and then I speak at a community center, and in five months, I sold 10,500 books and made a bestseller on 19 different lists. You got to be willing to do that thing that you didn't think you would do. To have that thing that you say you want to have, you got to do what you don't want to do, say what you don't want to say, to be the man, the woman you've always known yourself to be. Are you willing? See, my grandmother says your conviction has to cost you something. It has to cost you something. It's your conviction. What are you convicted about? What are you moved to do? What has to happen before you leave this planet? Do you know it? Make a list of it and then be willing to be mildly to mildly to significantly uncomfortable to make that thing happen. See, I was willing. I didn't know. I didn't know more than I knew. But I was willing to, to be brilliant in one sense and clueless in another and let them both live together in my duality. I was willing. Before I finished the first two, I got the book deal for the, I got the contract for the second tour via FedEx at somebody's house. Now that was the book, that was the, the contract that we were negotiating about and they didn't want to give it to me because I, I was, I, I had so many different things I wanted to do. I was a risk. Are you willing to be a risk? Yes, yes. Are you willing to be a risk? Yes, yes. Are you willing to be a risk? Yes, yes. Fast forward to Aspen, Colorado. I'm in Aspen with my good friend Lee Bauer. Where's my friend Lee? My good friend, Lee Bauer, I love you, I love you, I love you. In TLC, where T Terry Tillman is, Terry, I love you, I love you, I love you. My brothers, Fab, where's Fab? My brothers, I love you. My brother's from another mother. I'm their sister from another mister. And we're in Aspen, Colorado, and Rhonda Byrne comes to talk about the secret. And I'm, and I'm saying this to say, your brand is not going to always be built in a package. Are you willing to, to flex your hustle muscle? Are you willing? Are you willing to play outside the box, outside the boundaries? I, I never knew where the boundaries were. People say, how did you become a, 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 a major speaker? What classes did you take? I said, I came through the back door. I didn't come through the front door. I, I made a door where there, was, where there wasn't one. Are you willing to make a door where there isn't one? Your path may not be her path sitting next to you, may not be his path behind you. I couldn't measure myself against all the national speakers who were on major stages. They had something I didn't have. They had a background, they had a bio, they had an education, their teacher probably told them to speak. I had to make my way, so are you willing? I'm here to charge you. I'm here to charge you that everything you need, you woke up with. The human spirit is unbreakable, unshakable, and unstoppable. That I'm clear of. That I'm clear of. Rhonda Byrne comes to Aspen, Colorado, and she's talking about this law of attraction thing. I grew up in a Baptist church. I don't know what she's talking about. But I'm going to listen because my friends are listening, and they're very smart. And she's talking about the law of attraction. She's talking about the secret, and she has a very thick Australian accent. She's very beautiful, and she has a rhinestone right here. So I'm distracted. <laughs> she got all kind of beautiful colors on. I'm ADD anyway, so squirrel, squirrel, like that's me. So she got a rhinestone, she got all kind of colors, she got a thick Australian accent, and she's talking about a secret. I'm like, who got a secret? Who keeping secrets? I, I'm totally confused. So I'm going to tell y'all something going to blow you guys' mind. So she's talking about a secret, and everyone's listening, and they're nodding, so... I'm going to nod too, because I'm a C student. We know how to get through school. We do what everybody else is doing, right? <laughs> right? Yes, yes. So she's asking people to be in the secret, and I'm like, well, I, she ain't gonna, I know she ain't going to ask me, so I don't have to worry about that, and I'm not going to raise my hand. And out of the blue, she doesn't point to anyone else. Everyone else raises their hand to offer, maybe one other person she points to, and I'm just sitting there like, I'm just going to let this moment pass, because I've been invited into this major group, I mean, mega group, I mean, I mean mega, I mean, Jack Campbell started this organization of who he thought to be the best transformational leaders on the planet, and somehow... I got on the list. Now, I'm not sure if that was an error. He like merged chicken soup list. But I'm going to ride this one until the wheels fall off. <laughs> so this is only the third meeting, so I ain't been discovered yet. I'm going to keep it on down low. <laughs> no, I'm serious, you guys. That's what I thought. I'm the, I'm the youngest person there. Um, uh, up until f several years ago, I'm one of the few. At the, for the first three years, I was the only person of color there. So I'm like, I don't know. But I'm going to ride this one until the wheels fall off. I soon found out I was right at home. They expect, they meant to invite me. But at this point, I wasn't sure. And so I'm sitting there quietly. 
And as we begin to move away from she, her speech finishes, she goes, I'd like you to be in it. I'm like, rut roll, because I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> I have no idea about no law of attraction, no secret, and I can barely understand what you're saying, and you got a rhinestone. <laughs> like, where you get that? Can I do that? Is that like, is it a, am I allowed to wear one? Because <laughs> I like that, baby. But I don't want to out myself, so I'm, I'll pass. I said, it's okay. Literally, I tried to get out of being in the secret, you guys. I was like, it's okay. She's like, no, 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 I really want you to do it. I'm like, it's okay. She's like, no, I insist. I heard you need to be in it. I was like, dang. So I go to my room really fast. I go on Google, because <laughs> everything's on Google. And I type in secret. What was the problem? It ain't out yet, because we making it. <laughs> it ain't on there yet. So I, I didn't think even the law of attraction, I didn't even know enough about that to search that. I probably would have got somewhere, but I did the secret. So now I'm like, oh, are we in trouble. Rut roll, rut roll. So I go back down, and they're getting us ready to, to go on, to do this two-hour interview, each one of us. And I said, I got it. I'm going to go in when Jack goes in, and then I'm just going to repurpose his words because that's what a C student does. <laughs> we know how to play back to you. We're good parrots, right? So I go in, I'm sitting in the back. I'm ready to get the information. I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to make this so Lisa. I'm going to lisa nize this one. <laughs> and they notice I'm in the back, and they said, Lisa, uh, we need you to step out because we want every teacher to have a fresh approach. <laughs> y'all better let me sit in here if y'all want something. <laughs> They kicked me out. So then my last hope, I'm getting my makeup done. And the makeup artist is like, I'm so excited to hear what you think about the secret. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And so I said, so what you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> she went to talk, and she goes, oh, wait. I don't want to ruin it. I'm going to wait for you. I was like, damn. So I released. I released every need to be smart. I released every need to fit in. I released the need to be accepted. And standing outside that door waiting for Jack to finish, I said, God, just let my truth come through me. Yes, yes. So what you saw on The Secret was me surrendering to what I didn't know and what I knew I knew. I know how to do me. I know how to love me. And all of a sudden, a year later, Rhonda calls me and says, you know, we got a lot of requests for you. Um, could we do a, a reshoot and have more of you? I said, what? More me? This is really funny. They came out to California, and we shot for eight hours. And I was in the first version of The Secret four times, and then they did a redo, and I was in the second version 19 times. And then I became one of the featured teachers by, by track, just by all the traction. And so I want to tell you, you don't have to know everything. Just know what you know and what you want to do. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have to know the details and the how, but know the what. Yes, yes. You don't have to know all the plan. Just hook your caboose to somebody else's train. Yes, yes. That's 10 steps ahead of you. And put your seatbelt on and hold on and run like hell. You don't have to know all the details. Don't stand here like this. See, your design, this is your time to spread your wings. Go to the edge and trust yourself. Trust that when you take that leap, one of three things will happen. You will either soar, you will have something soft to land on, or you're going to get a great big Band-Aid if you hit the ground. I've gotten all three and I've been okay. The world is waiting on you to show up like you've never shown up before. Yes, yes, yes. The world needs you to be bold, unapologetic, the world needs you to find your voice enough to say that thing you've been hesitating to say, to do that thing you've been hesitating to do, to be that man, that woman you've always known yourself to be. Yes, yes, See, yes. your barely recognizable future is waiting for you. Yes, yes. And I know that. I don't say that from rah-rah. I say that because I'm living it. See, I'm that same woman when my son, and some of you have heard the story. You'll always hear it. It's my story. I love it. I don't run out of content. This is just important to always say, so I'm re I remember the journey, and you get a glimpse of the journey. But when my son was born, I was on government's assistance. 
I had to get in the county line to help feed my baby. I had to get in the WIC line, the women, infant, and children line, to get free butter and free pasta and free milk to help feed my son Jelani. Very real for me. I remember it like it were yesterday. I remember standing in front of the woman promising her. I remember the words. I said, I promise you I won't be on government assistance long. I know a lot of people get on it and just stay on it, but I just need a little bit of help. I just, I'm in a low point. I just need a little help, but I promise you, I'll turn around and be a contributor to the world. And she was very dismissive, like, yeah, 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 lady. And I said, I'm sorry, can you stop writing and look at me? Because I need you to know I'm serious. And she looked up at me and, and she said, okay, can you sign here? <laughs> Four months later, I found a job and I went back to her and I had a handful of food stamps. I said, ma'am, I got a job, so I wanted to come and bring your food stamps back. She said, don't nobody bring food stamps back. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not everybody. I'm Lisa Nichols. And I asked you three, four months ago to see me. And she said, you keep a ma'am. 18 years ago, that was my life. My life was struggling trying to pay my bill and not run out a month money before I run out a month. My life was not just robbing Peter to pay Paul, but I was pissing them both off. My life was trying to manage my drama, manage my chaos, manage my limiting beliefs, manage not being good enough, manage my dark skin that I'm in, manage my full lips that wasn't so popular all the time, manage my round hips, manage my kinky hair that the world just didn't show as beautiful. I was in the place of trying to feel like I was enough. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Uh, and, and your story is your story, whatever it is. I was in the, in, the, in the story of the people in my life around me being magnificent and me being mediocre. Mediocre. I was managing that. I was managing the fact that I knew I had a giant in me. I had a giant in me that was trying to get out, but I didn't quite know how to facilitate the giant out. Yes, yes? I didn't know how to help the giant come forth. I didn't know that I can be as great as my dreams. All I knew was that they were my dreams. I didn't quite know how to make them my reality. And I didn't know that I could because my teacher said I'm the weakest writer. And my teacher said I shouldn't speak in public. So how can I be an international speaker and a best-selling author? Who do I have the nerve to be that? in spite of my past. Yes, yes. And so I just stopped by here to remind you that your past doesn't equal your future. Yes, yes, yes. Never have, never will. Your past is your platform to make the future more delicious. Your past just gives context to how delicious your future gets to be. It's not in spite of your past you get to be major. And I'm not implying everyone has a hor horrible past. Some of you have had magnificent past. Some of you had amazing past. And that qualifies you to stand on your story, not in your story. So I just stopped by. I look at my life today and and my brand is in over 160 languages. I have six bestsellers. When I look at No Matter What, the one book that's just me, I have two chicken soups, I have The Secret, and I have a couple other compilation books. And the one book that's just me, just Lisa, was the one book that I got paid a million dollars to write. And I look up and I go, a million dollars is great, but a million dollars is great because my teacher said I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire <laughs> life. That's what makes... And nothing against her, nothing against her. I'm grateful for her. She made me work. There's no judgment on her. People said, did you send her a book? I said, no, it was, it was on six bestsellers, this including the New York Times. She saw my name. <laughs> nothing against her though, because you need that kind of motivation. But what makes the no matter what book so delicious was the journey to get there. So I'm, I'm, I'm stepping inside your journey right now to shake you up. I'm stepping inside your journey right now to rattle, rattle any form of complacency you thought you were going to live with. I'm stepping inside your journey right now to remind you that the world needs you, that your message, your gift doesn't belong to you. It belongs to us. Yes, yes. It belongs to the people whose life you're going to change, save, and impact because you have the courage to be unstoppable. Yes, yes. Because you had the courage to be unshakable. Because you wouldn't waver and you were non-negotiable. Your life has less to do with serving you than it does to do with serving us. And so I want to make it uncomfortable for you. 
to sit in any form of mediocrity. See, because mediocrity is crowded. But there's a whole lot of room up here in excellence. Yes, yes. And I just stopped by to shake you up a bit, to stir your soul a bit. Is it working? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. I stopped by to remind you of your greatness. I, I want to share a story with you. And, and, and I'm, last year, I, I, I just, I, just I, want, I prayed for about five months straight. I spent a lot of prayer time asking God, where is my, where is my journey now? Where, what am I to do now? I, I've exceeded every single goal I set, every single one, every single one. I don't even know where to go now. Like, what do I say now? Because <laughs> everything is met and surpassed. And um, on September 18th, I still get nervous saying it. It's my first time publicly saying it. Um, on September 18th, 2013, my company became the first company in the self-development industry to go public. Thank you. Thank you. So I say, I guess my next book that I should write is from public assistance to going public. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. That's a journey. I'm that same mother in the government's assistance line. I'm the same mama who ate beanies and weenies for about five years straight, more beanies than weenies. I'm that same mama. And so when I look at my life now, it's barely recognizable. What I know is that it's not just exclusive for me. What I know is that there was no hookup. I hooked myself up. Yes, yes. What I know is that you can hook yourself up too. Yes, yes, yes. Hook your caboose to someone else's train. Put on your seatbelt and stay coachable. I created my first, I've worked for five years to create a program where I help speakers really take their speaking business to the next level. Authors, take your, 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 your author business to the next level. Trainers and coaches, to take your business to the next level, to use the things that I've learned to really help elevate your business. I spent five days in my office, no phones on, no calls, no emails, just creating the most comprehensive curriculum in my company's history. Because in my prayer time last year, I asked God, what should I be doing? He said, you've been Michael Jordan. Now I need you to become Phil Jackson. And so I'm looking to d discover the Michael Jordans who want to share your message. Those of you who stood up, those of you who raised your hand, I want to invite you. Um, we have different ways. I'll talk about a lot of them on Monday. Different ways to show you the detailed levels of building a sustainable business, building a sustainable message that's wrapped in a, a, bi a, a, a viable business that's straight enough, strict enough, and in, in order enough to go public if you choose. You may not choose that, but you want it that clean. Does that make sense, you guys? You want to create generational wealth. So we have a program called the Speakers Alliance. And I won't go into the details now. Level one is called Accelerate Me. If you're just getting started and you want to jump in and learn the foundation of a speaker, the core message, how to create your snap, how to, how to shape your business, your, all of that. The second level is called Profitize Me. If you want to live your dream, you need to know how to make money doing it. And there's no apology in making money doing what you love. Nothing to apologize for. And the last level is my favorite, is Publicize Me. And that's when you've gone through the first two levels, then I help you get on stage, and I help put you on my stages as well, and we do brand alliance. So there's three levels to help you build your career as a speaker. You'll be able to talk to Jay. Jay, raise your hand. And Vasavi, raise your hand. Or Jen, stand up and raise your hand. You can talk to any one of them. Or to, on Monday, we'll have a greater discussion about it as well. So I want to serve you in that way, and if any of you want coaching, we can serve you in that way as well. Happy to. And any time you do business with us, um, a significant uh, part of our proceeds go back to Awesomeness Fest, and they send it all to all the sponsoring organizations that they're donating money to. So we position ourselves to be one of the largest sponsors of Awesomeness Fest through anything that we earn here. So I want to share that with you. In closing, I want to share a story about my grandmother. In 2007, I was... I was on Oprah, and I thought my grandmother, 
she picked cotton as a little girl, so she should go to Oprah. So I took her with me. I thought I was doing my grandmother a favor. <laughs> my grandmother, she immediately got on her cell phone and said, my baby is taking me to, my grandbaby's taking me to Oprah. And she talks loud in the cell phone because she don't understand how I don't have a cord. <laughs> right, so she talks loud. Yeah, we're going to Oprah. Mm -hmm. We're going to stay at the Omni Hotel where the guests of Oprah Winfrey stay. See, she thinks the name is the Omni Hotel where the guests of Oprah Winfrey stays, because that's what comes up at the end of Oprah, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that big hotel, mm -hmm, the Omni Hotel, where the guests of Oprah Winfrey stay. That's where we stay. Mm -hmm. So we get to Oprah, and I'm having a meeting with Rhonda Byrne and Jack Canfield and Reverend Michael Beckwith and everyone else, and I come back to the room, and my grandmother says, baby, this lady came, and she asked me that I want this thing called a turn down. She said, I asked her, do that cost? She said, no. So I said, come on in and turn down. She said, baby, she left some dessert on your pillow. You don't have to order no dessert. <laughs> that was the chocolate, y'all. The next morning, I get up, and someone here needs to hear this. Some of you are very successful, wildly successful. Some of you are just getting started. Some of you are just in your groove, growing your businesses 100%, 50% annually. The next morning I get up and I get a phone call and it says, Miss Nichols, the call on the other side of the phone says, Miss Nichols, your Harpo Ink Limo is here to pick you up. And I said, my Harpo Ink Limo, oh man, I'm here, I'm here, bomb.com, I'm here, I'm here. I threw my coat on, I get my purse, I go to walk out the door and my grandmother says, baby. And you know, you can tell what's coming out my grandmother's mouth by the way she says, baby. This was a little different. She said, baby, go make your bed. <laughs> okay. I go. I make my bed. I go back, pick up my purse, get my jacket. Come on, it's a limo outside waiting for us with Harpo ink on the side. Come on, Grandma. She said, baby. I was like, it's that same kind of baby. <laughs> baby, go wipe, wipe out the sink basin. Wipe out the sink basin? I don't wipe the sink basin out at home. I go, I wipe out the sink basin. And I don't know if you have, you've ever had a kind of grandmother I have, but in my family, if you're going to question your grandmother, you got to preface it with something. I say, Grandma, no disrespect. You got to do that if you like, like your teeth. <laughs> in your mouth. Grandma, no disrespect. But why am I making the bed and wiping out the sink basin at the Omni Hotel where the guest of Oprah Winfrey stay. I'm a guest, Grandmama. I'm a guest. She said, keep wiping. When you finish, I'll tell you. I said, okay. I finished. I came in there. She said, now lead a lady a tip. I said, I just did her job. <laughs> lead a lady a tip. I went down, left for $3. She said, you make a lot of money. Don't be cheap. I went a little deeper, left her $10. I said, Grandma, why am I making the bed and wiping out the sink basin and leaving a tip at the Omni Hotel? She said, because your great-great-grandmother was a day worker. When people knew she was coming, they would leave their rooms extra nasty. She said, you're not going to do that, baby. You're going to honor these people here. She said, and you left her a tip because when your great-great-grandmother got a tip, we got to eat meat that day. She said, I know you think you're walking on this nice carpet at the Omni Hotel. <laughs> she said it every time, y'all. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. She thought it was the whole title. And I know, I know you're walking on this car, nice car, but I know you're walking on those nice shoes with that red, burgundy, whatever bottom. But you're not walking on the carpet. And I say this to every one of you here, my friends. You're not walking on this carpet. You're not walking on your shoes. My grandmother said you're walking on the shoulders of those people who've come before you, your ancestors who did anything and everything they could so you can occupy this seat. Yes, yes. 
You're not walking just on your shoes. You're walking on someone else's legacy that they worked to build for you. See, baby, your great-great-grandmother knew she wouldn't stay at the Omni Hotel. They knew they wouldn't stay here. They could barely get the job, so they knew they would never be a guest. But they hoped one day you'd be a guest. She says, so when you walk out that door, and I'm going to say to you, when you walk out that door on the way to the catamaran, she said, there's not just you walking through that doorway. There's an allegiance of ancestors cheering you on, walking with you, saying, do the dream. Live the dream. Don't get scared. And if you get scared, do it with knees knocking and teeth chattering, but don't stop. Go to the edge. Spread your wings and then trust. We got your back. You ain't going to fall. And if you do, we'll catch you. We are in your blood. You woke up enough this morning. It's not your job to sit down. We stood up. That's how you can stand. So you got to stand up so they can stand. She said, baby, this ain't just your journey. This is Blanche's journey, Bernice's journey, Claudine's journey, Maybelle's journey. She went some names, went deep. <laughs> she said, they're all with you right now. So you don't get to sit down, you get to soar. She said, now, get your coat <laughs> and your purse and go on to the limo. And that day I had an amazing experience with Oprah. She was the cherry on top of my cake. But that day, my grandmother, my calling, the reminder, it was my cake. So I just stopped by to stir your soul. I stopped by to remind you of your greatness. I stopped by to stand with you as your sister, to say we are on our way to a breathtaking, unrecognizable future together. Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Yes, yes? yes, yes. yes, yes. Are you willing to do what you've never done? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Are you willing to be who you've never been? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Are you willing to play bigger than you've ever played? Yes, yes? yes. Are you willing to move with knees knocking? Yes, yes. yes, yes. With teeth chattering? Yes yes. yes, yes. Are you willing to stand with us? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Are you willing to stand alone if you have to? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Are you willing to leave a legacy? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Then I'm done, Vision. <laughs> Y'all got the message. <laughs>